finally somebody put out a power station that has this one feature on it that I've always wanted. Let's talk about it. What up, I'm Ive. And this is the LoomPal 1000 power station. And I have always wanted this particular form factor. And I got one. Now in the spirit of candor, I've had this a lot longer than the company intended. <laughs> My bad. So just to start, there are three versions of this particular device. There's the LoomPal 1000, 600, and 300. This is the largest one, 1000 watt hours of capacity and a 1200 watt inverter with surge up to 1500 watts. I don't care about surge. I guess it's important, but I don't care. It has a pretty slick interface. It's not the best interface, but they did a lot with what they have available to them. They show watts in, watts out but instead of like only showing you one like some other power stations they alternate between what you can see so you'll see input and then it'll flash to output input which is pretty cool i, I kind of like that approach it also shows time remaining to charge and time remaining to discharge depending on what activity you're doing this joint has two outlets you can see here it has one three prong and one two prong it would have been nice if it had two three prongs but i'm glad i got a three prong this also has a 110 um volt range i think it sits at about maybe 112 before you put a load on it and then it drops down to 110 and when it gets down lower one of the reviewers was saying that you can see this get down to like 108 volts, which is interesting. You're like, ugh. Three USB ports, one USB-C port. We'll talk about that later. 12 volt lighter socket. It has four <laughs> 55, 21 ports, which is pretty interesting, pretty cool. But it's, it's how do I explain this? I love 5521. It was my first connection type. I've grown pretty fond of it. XC60 is probably my favorite now just because of how robust it is. But 5521 is very versatile compared to a lot of power stations that I have. A lot of my beginning power stations have 5521. I'm rambling. It has four of them, two inputs and two outputs. So it's pretty cool. This power station has a lot going for it. Okay, let me let me break some news to you. It's not LFP. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not necessarily pressed to always have LFP in my power stations. This one does not specify which capacity, which type of battery it has in it. But most of these power stations have jumped up from 500 to at least 800 cycles, which is about a good two years of cycling from zero to 100, zero to 100, before you get dropped down to the 80% watt hour capacity. Now, about charging this, first of all, Okay, let, let me let me just say this. You can charge up to 140 watts from the included charge adapter. There are no other cables in the box. It's just like you couldn't throw an MC4 to 5521 in there. They didn't, so you'll have to get those separately. The good thing is if we have, if any of us have power stations laying around from like the Go Labs or something like that, you should already have an MC4 to 5521. I can't assume that that's everybody, but it's just something to think about. You may have that cable laying around already. You can charge from about the same amount from solar. It has a DC input, as you can see here, and it also has a PV input. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like they're pretty interchangeable, or at least you could throw solar into either port. I've had it in either port and it has charge. Here is the one feature that I've always wanted to see on these type of power stations, and this one has it. It has a bi-directional USB-C port at 100 watts. That is not uncommon on some power stations, but in the 1000 watt hour, this is almost non-existent. I think there's one other power station that does that, that I know of. I don't own it, but I think there's another one out there. The reason why bi-directional charging on this size battery matters to me is because if I'm running a smaller load, I can easily power dump into this power station to keep that load going for longer, which is an interesting thing. And here's another interesting thing. You can triple charge this power station. So you can have solar coming in, you can have DC from 12 volt coming in, and you can have USB-C coming in. This is the triple charging test. Okay, we got 116 from solar. I'm gonna turn on, uh, 
USB-C here on the R whatever this is, R600. And you can see that our power is jumped up to one, two, 200 watts. Now, let's add the, <laughs> the plug. The plug should be giving it like 140. Now the solar range on it is a typical 12 volt panel. It's like 12 to 28 or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's something like that. And on solar charging, I have a couple of devices that do not turn back on. What I mean by that is um, some devices overnight, as it gets dark and then the sun comes up in the morning, they don't turn back on because of solar charging. Most devices do this, but some don't. This device will start solar charging once it starts getting power from a panel. On the back, it has this little port that looks like how we would just fast charge some of our other power stations that we may have, but that's not what it's intended for. It's actually intended to parallel this device to another one of these to get more watt hour capacity. It doesn't increase the watt capacity of the inverter. It just gives you longer runtime on a particular load. The only thing that that's good for, to be honest, in my opinion, is if you need a longer continuous runtime for a particular load. If you have something where you could just turn it off and pop it onto something else, or if you're there to do that, then that's fine. But if you had two of these and you had a load that needed to run for as long as possible, then you could take like a regular normal AC cable, plug it into one port of the front AC port of one of the devices and then plug it into the back. And then that joint will feed that other one power and it will be parallel. You'll notice this like a fancy aluminum case. This has First of all, it's built like a tank. I mean, it's really good. Some of the other YouTubers were kind of touting that you could stand on it and they did in fact stand on it. But that it has another benefit in that it runs relatively cool. And another reason why I love this particular device and I always wanted one because it ran really quiet because it doesn't get warm under what I would call normal loads. Now, if you run in an inverter at 1200, the fan does come on, but the fan is not too loud. I'll put some footage in about what the fan sounds like when it's running really hard right here. This is the first time I've heard this fan go off on this thing in weeks. I've never heard the fan before. It's getting in about, what, 200 watts? That's not absurd. It's dual charging. It's getting 150 from that little plug right there with the tag on it. And it's getting about 45 from the blue USB-C. But that's interesting. Um, I'm gonna probably need to give it some space to get that air out there. So I'm gonna do that in a second and I'm recording this on a tablet. It don't look that bad. Now this has been running for about two minutes. It's doing 700 watts and there's no fan. I'm going to run this down to about 30%. And if at any point the fan turns on, I'll record it and get the footage. But 700 watts, no fan. Oddly enough, this power station's fan came on before this one came on. <laughs> but this fan is quiet too. And in this situation, you can see that it is inputting and outputting power, but still no fan. Not a problem. Now, a question I do need to answer really quickly is, is this uh, voltage regulated? It's sitting at about 34% and I'm seeing 12.5, 12.7. So I'm going to see how much voltage this drops, if at all. Okay, 12.7 is at 23%. So, yep, regulate it. The LoomPad 1000 has another trick up its sleeve in that it could operate as a car start or car jump situation. They don't, the cables aren't in the box, but it can do car jumps. Who knew? And the way that you do that is you press the DC button a couple times. Oh, I didn't talk about the button layout. The button layout is really interesting. It has four individual buttons for each component. You have one for the lamp, you can see here, the backlight. We didn't talk about the backlight. It's an interesting diffuse one. You have a button for AC, you have a button for USB, and then you have a button for the DC components, which is the barrel, the 12 volt, and all of that jazz. It does beep when you turn them on and off, which is typical for a lot of power stations, but I find that they work really well. They're very responsive, and it's really nice. As you can see here, the top part of the device is not flat. It has this kind of like flex handle that sits on top of it that has a little bit of give to it when you grab and pick it up. It's kind of like this plastic material, not like a fall faux leather or anything like that. It's really interesting. Ah, uh, you know, whatever. 
You may like it, you may not like it, you may not care. Now, there are a couple caveats that I can't necessarily attribute to this power station, but I did find some interesting things and I'll try and show you after I tell you. So what happened was I was using this because it has a nice watt hour capacity. It charges at a decent click from solar and then you could power dump into it very easily of various means. You could go 12 volt to 5521 and then you could do USB-C. Something odd happened when I would charge from an EcoFlow power station, I have two and it happened with both of them and I'd had the AC on, it would do this weird thing where the AC would turn on and off and it would cycle. Now this does have pass-through charging. Um, it charges fine from the wall. I haven't tested it with any other power station as of yet. All right, here we go with the LumaPal. It's at 35%. AC is still on, but you hear that clicking? It's supposed to be charging from its DC, which is plugged into my EcoFlow River, but it ain't doing nothing. Yo. I unplugged it just now. I'm gonna plug it right back in. Let's see what happens. Output power 71. I don't know what that's from. I guess it's getting calibrated. Input power was what, 28? So it's clicking again. Input power eight is going down and up. <sighs> Man. So what this basically means is that, uh, you know, it's not charging via AC. And I just, oh wait, look what it's doing. The internet is bugging too. So it's not just that it's not charging, the AC inverter is turning on and off. You see that? That's my internet. Interesting. And then this light is still on. Still showing AC still on. So I thought that whole situation was odd. You know, I don't know what to make of that. And then I also experienced some inconsistency with charging over USB-C also from other power stations. And let me explain the problem. What I've been trying to do is use this to power dump into it at 100 watts because you know that one has a 100 watt non-bidirectional port which pairs well with these devices that have bi-directional ports because if you take a device and they both have bi-directional ports, it, it never goes well. Sometimes I get about 70, sometimes I do get 100, but most times I end up with 45 watts coming into this joint, which is okay, but it's not great. This is my first time testing the PEC run. DC is already on. It has a 100 watt rated, non-bi-directional <laughs> USB-C port. This cable is supposed to be rated for 100 watts. And I'm, well, the reason why I'm testing it is because I want to see if this cable is the issue. See what I mean? 47 watts. Now let's go grab a, a better cable. A cable I don't use so much. This cable is a JSOX. JSO. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get it plugged in. And look at that. It's doing the 100 watts. Now, when I used a power brick of sorts, I would typically get good results from charging over USB, but when I tried to go from USB-C from a power station that didn't have bi-directional charging, like my EB70, it didn't work incredibly well. Sometimes I had to unplug the cable and plug it back in, and I'm not blaming the device for this. It could just be something that's weird between the power station charging the power station. I was a little bit let down by that, but it's something that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, I did not do a capacity test on this. Um, I typically don't get into those, but Adam D. Lay, D-E space L-A-Y is what I have in my notes. He did a capacity test on it and he got about 89% of the capacity of it. So about 900 watt hours, maybe like 894 or something like that. So I just thought you would know that because I knew that from the other YouTuber. This device sitting in this particular form factor, it has a very interesting design that may appeal to some people who want something that's more long than wide. So it sits in a very narrow footprint where you can slide it inside of something pretty easily and then it will fit in there and it will be nice. I like the, the form factor. I also like that it typically just runs whisper quiet. The only times that I've had the fan go a bit loud is when I was like running an air conditioner off of it or something like that. And over time, the fan would turn on. They say that it turns on in an in, in intelligent way. So I'm gonna take their word for it. But it's a very nice device, man. I, I just, I'm really impressed with it. Outside of those little quirks that are not big quirks to me, it has worked incredibly well. I've never had an issue with it charging, 
Um, I've never had an issue with it powering stuff up to its rated capacity. The fan is all but non-existent outside of some cer special circumstances. The fan has never come on while charging, even while triple charging, to my knowledge. It's not LifePo, but again, that's not the biggest deal for me. Uh, I, I don't mind it because typically when you get away from LifePo, you get like a slightly larger recharging range on the temperature. So you can have it outside in slightly colder weather. If you live somewhere hotter, you can have it outside in slightly hotter weather. So it's pretty cool. I love this form factor. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Would you consider something like this? Do you see any practical use for this particular design that is more narrow and longer than wider, and especially with the having the handle on the top? Uh, yeah, side holla.